Okay, continuing with uh, chapter two, last three sections. Remember, the goal of chapter two is to learn how to solve problems in one dimension. So, vertical motion, uh, which is only under the influence of gravity, is called free fall. Two objects, which are dropped from the same height, will, if air resistance can be neglected, hit the ground at the same time and with the same speed. So any two objects that are in free fall, regardless of their mass, have the same acceleration, which turns out to be 9.80 meters per second squared downward. So, for example, in a, a vacuum chamber where all the air has been pumped out, uh, so there's no air resistance, a feather, which is very light, and an apple, which is a lot heavier, will fall uh, together, will fall in this motion diagram with the exact same acceleration. It's only air resistance which causes the feather to fall slower in, in, in a normal circumstance. So here's again a motion diagram of something in free fall with only gravity acting on it and we're neglecting air resistance. Uh, the, if you make a plot of velocity versus time, the velocity is decreasing. If it's dropped from rest, it starts at zero, and then one second later it's traveling downward at 9.8 meters per second. Two seconds later it's traveling downward at 19.6 meters per second. So the, uh, the y value of the acceleration is negative g, where g is uh, a positive number, which here uh, near the surface of the Earth has a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. Other planets would have different values of g. Section 2.6 is about motion on an inclined plane. So imagine you've got an object which is sliding down a straight, frictionless, inclined plane, a plane uh, that's angled uh, at some angle theta relative to horizontal. So if there were no incline, uh, there'd be some vertical acceleration it would fall downwards with this A free fall 9.8. And here it is. But you can break this vector into two components or pieces. Uh, a with these two lines is A parallel and A this, these two perpendicular lines is a perpendicular. So it has some component going down the incline and some component going into the incline. And this surface somehow blocks a perpendicular. So the actual acceleration of the object is only this piece or this component of the vector. And that turns out to be g, the length of this uh, free fall acceleration, times sine theta. The acceleration is, if you've defined it a positive to be down the incline, is positive g sine theta. If you define uh, positive to be up the incline, then the acceleration is negative g sine theta. Okay, I want to investigate the motion of a red ball, which starts at the bottom of a ramp, rolls up the ramp, slows down, slows down, slows down, slows down, and then starts rolling down the ramp, getting faster and faster and faster. So. First of all, we define the distance up the ramp as being uh, s. For some reason, Knight uses s for distance. And so, if you start at the bottom, let's use, uh, let's use blue here for position. Start at the bottom, and then at time t equals 0, you're at uh, s equals 0. You go up, and then slow down, slow down, and then turn around and come back down. So this very top point here, is called the turning point. Turning point. It's when you get to the highest point on the ramp, and then after that you start coming back down again. So if you look at velocity, which I'll plot in green here, you start with a positive velocity. When you get to the very top, uh, this should be when you're momentarily stopped, zero velocity, and then as you're going back down, you get to negative velocity. So it turns out that the slope of this blue graph is given by the green graph, which is that it's supposed to be a straight line there. It's a continuously decreasing uh, velocity with respect to time. It starts off positive, goes through zero, ends up being negative. And then, if you uh, will go to sort of an orange here for acceleration, uh, let's get a better orange. Brown. 
Uh, acceleration is the slope of the green graph, and that one is always going to be a negative value, and that's constant. Okay, so two, section 2.7 is about non-constant acceleration. So here we have a more realistic velocity versus time graph for a car, which leaves a stop sign. So initially, your stop to be equal to zero, then the person steps on the gas and the velocity starts increasing and as time goes on the velocity versus time curve uh, looks something like this. This graph is not a straight line so this motion does not have constant acceleration. In fact here's a plot of acceleration versus time. When you're at the stop sign you uh, there's a large acceleration when you've stepped on the gas then as you start getting faster and faster you kind of release your uh, foot a little bit, and plus there's a lot of air resistance, so your acceleration decreases with time. And the instantaneous, this is ex instantaneous acceleration uh, versus time. So it's the instantaneous slope of V versus T at these various different times, and that's written as D by DT of V. Slope of the velocity versus time graph at a time T. If you know the velocity, and so if you know the initial velocity and you know the acceleration as a function of time, for example from having solved out the net force, then even if the acceleration is not constant, we can divide the motion into n steps of length delta t in which it is approximately constant and find, find the final velocity as being the sum of the acceleration times delta t. This is the change in velocity over every little time step. And so the final velocity is the initial velocity plus the sum of all these changes. And another way of, uh, of writing this is it's an integral. Final velocity is the initial velocity plus the integral from the initial to the final time of the acceleration uh, integrated over time dt.